Highway construction, traffic management, weather response. It's the government agency touching the lives of nearly all Texans each day. The Texas Department of Transportation. From an origin of only a handful of staff a century ago, to today's massive 11,000 person workforce. This is the golden age of TxDOT. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of State of Texas. I'm your host, Josh Hinkle, joined today by investigator Brittany Glass. Brittany, even after all these years, men continue to dominate TxDOT, so much that some workers and even some state leaders say it's a boys club. Yes, and in a five-month investigation, we discovered hundreds of allegations of discrimination and harassment inside a culture where employee and hiring numbers are anything but equal. From the capital city to the panhandle, from the Big D to the border. Tamala Saldana traveled the state for years as a supervisor with the Texas Department of Transportation, a time she remembers as lonely. Almost every district in Texas and the faces were the same. They were the same, they were um, male and they were predominantly white male. There were many times where I sat in meetings and I was the only female and I was the only black uh, African American in that room. The former University of Texas track star once graced the cover of TxDOT's newsletter, called a superhero for her work recruiting minority vendors for the agency. I wasn't dumb or I wasn't naive to know that it was a benefit for them to say the face of this program um, is someone who is an African-American female. I think that people would um, could point to my background in textile and say, well, wait a minute. She rose from a specialist to a lead to a section director, and that in itself, you know, shows progress. But the numbers, Saldana says, tell a different story. A decade ago, women made up just 24 percent of the agency's workforce. Only 8 percent of workers were African American. Today, both of those are down. Women represent 22 percent. African Americans less than eight. This does not get any better. Do you believe that the lack of diversity at TxDOT created a healthy working environment for you? The lack of diversity created a very, very stressful um, working environment for me. An environment where she says she witnessed discrimination and reported it. Cases of cases go going on, in fact, the more I complained, the more I felt retaliated against. And she believes it's what led to her firing in 2012. I became the problem. In their eyes, I became the problem. There are other agencies that have problems like this, but yeah. no other agency compares to TxDOT when you talk about sheer numbers. It's time for TxDOT to, to wake up to the year 2018 and understand that that can't be allowed. Austin State Representative Celia Israel sits on the House Transportation Committee, a panel watching TxDOT closely. When do you expect it to be at a level where we could get an update on the disparity study? A legislative audit last year revealed TxDOT has struggled to improve its workforce diversity, repeatedly falling short of equal employment opportunity standards for African American, Hispanic, and women workers. When you're being told that you're not meeting federal standards, is there anything more that you're going to do to step it up? We're not violating anything, we're just, we don't have a, a wide spectrum of people. The last time I checked your organizational chart, I don't, I don't recall, aside from a new female commissioner, that, that you surround yourself with smart women. In this day and age, to have your executive team be so non-diverse is, um, is striking. You're talking about the people at the top level who set the culture for the rest of the agency. My fear and my concern is that there's an entrenched philosophy about hiring people who look like yourself. An analysis of state workforce data shows women largely fill roles like executive and administrative assistants or human resources. But men dominate jobs like electricians, equipment operators, even engineers. Women know stuff too. We, uh, we're good at math too. Texada said one of the reasons that there are so many more men in the agency is because the careers have been in predominantly male fields. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just shrug your shoulders and then just say, well, that's just the way it is. It's disappointing that we're not more diverse and more reflective of the state of Texas. We need more applicants to get more interviews, to hire more 
uh, people in these different uh, categories where we're seeking to improve our uh, diversity. We're reaching out to universities and to um, even high schools that have STEM programs to try and make sure that we're receiving good quality applications from both female and minorities. Text.Records records do show increased recruiting efforts in recent years, hiring a diversity coordinator, hitting up more career fairs, and new marketing materials featuring more minorities and women. At Text.Dot, we are building bigger bridges to the future. But even though women represented a third of all job applicants, they made up just a fifth of Text.Dot's total hires last year. Doesn't that suggest that Text.Dot is moving in the wrong direction? We've made progress, but we want to continue that progress. I'm hoping that we can have another discussion this fall. I, I really don't want you to pay lip service to it. Um, I want you to to really get after it. You have a lot of power in this because it's your job to scrutinize and to set expectations for TechStot. Yes. How will you handle this? I fully expect that um, when, when the nuances of your report come out that we'll be able to ask questions not only in the Transportation Committee where we see TechStot a lot, but during the appropriations process where they are validating their budget. Why do they continue to get funding when they're not hiring and are they not meeting these numbers? Here I am as a uh, African American uh, female who, you know, took a lot of pride in my profession. I worked hard. I, I went to school, got a master's, got a PhD. Um, I felt like they failed not only me, but they failed the employees. Regarding the allegations Saldana says she made to TextDot about her co-workers, the agency says they were never substantiated. And after she was fired, Saldana filed a discrimination lawsuit against TextDot. It has since, though, been dismissed. And TextDot disciplinary records say she was fired for violating the agency's conflict of interest policy, specifically signing invoices for a service provider with whom she had a personal relationship. But it isn't just about keeping employees, it's also about the agency's hiring practices. Lawmakers who we spoke with, like Representative Israel, are throwing out ideas, and one of those would be whenever there is an opening, don't necessarily just fill it with a man because no qualified woman applied. Instead, leave that position open and wait until you find the right woman or the right minority. They're out there, it might just take some more time to find them. It's another challenge after they're hired and how the agency responds to its employees. We've discovered more than 200 allegations and complaints from discrimination to retaliation and sexual harassment in just the last five years at TechStot. These are part of official TechStot records, stories like this woman's. I did a lot of hard work and they robbed me. They, you know. They robbed me in my retirement. Coming up, we explore the steps TechStot takes to address situations like that and why some state leaders say it's not enough. Allegations of sexual harassment and discrimination inside the Texas Department of Transportation, part of a five-month investigation into this massive state agency of more than 11,000 workers, where fewer than a quarter are women. Those who have come forward with complaints are often left with little to no resolution, some filing costly lawsuits, others saying they left or were forced out of the agency altogether. Now some state lawmakers are questioning a culture created in a male-dominated agency over a century in existence and setting expectations of immediate change. I started out hanging signs, striping roads, swinging a sledgehammer. I had a goal and I took a lot of pride in the work. After a decade of road and maintenance work at TechStot, Tracy Martinez said she'd had enough. In a complaint filed last year, she alleges gender discrimination and sexual harassment against coworkers and her supervisor. TechStot preaches that they are a family. So I'm thinking after 10 years, I'm with my family. I can express to them, you know, that I am uncomfortable with certain situations and not get ignored. TechStot data shows right now just 14% of employees in the Waco district where Martinez worked are women. There are no female officials or administrators, according to the agency. 
In her complaint, Martinez says at times she felt her supervisor belittled her in front of coworkers and gave her more tasks and responsibilities without compensation or promotion. She also spells out repeated concerns over inappropriate drug testing procedures, where she says she was the only woman in a room full of men expected to hold her urine in her hand in front of those male coworkers. It didn't stop there. She alleges the men had vulgar nicknames for daily exercises. One of them entailed bending over and touching your toes, and they called it the permission. The evaluations began to get threatened if we didn't do the stretches. She says she refused to participate in activities, including those exercises, and believes that led Textot to fire her. They robbed me of my retirement. In the past five years, TxDOT workers across the state have filed complaints with more than 200 allegations of sexual harassment, harassment, discrimination, and retaliation against the agency and its leadership. The most recent complaints involve obscene physical gestures and daily racial comments about Hispanic workers in Lakey. A woman in Denton shown a pornographic movie by a male coworker. Another woman in El Paso harassed by her supervisor and fearing for her safety. And a crew chief in Nolan County groping a female colleague. What is the agency doing to try to control what looks like a cultural negative aspect of working there? That's why we've had policies in place for, for years to deal with harassment, discrimination. And if we find an allegation and it, it gets substantiated, we're going to deal with it directly. <laughs> Amid a legislative audit highlighting TxDOT's struggle to meet equal employment opportunity standards in recent years, the agency has worked to improve its complaint process, adding a division within human resources to specifically address such problems. That includes educating new employees during orientation and updating policies and procedures to make sure workers understand the process for filing complaints. There are a lot of complaints and it goes back for years. But the complaints are still there which tells me that there's not an effective system in place to deal with these kind of complaints. Houston State Representative Sempronia Thompson sits on the House Transportation Committee. We shared with her the outcomes of employee discrimination and harassment complaints made to TxDOT last year. Agency records show a few times complaints resulted in more training or reminders about professional standards. In other cases, suspects received a written reprimand, probation, transfer, or termination. But with the majority of complaints, including Martinez, TxDOT investigated but took no disciplinary action. It seems to me there's not a lot of concern about a person or uh, the issue once the person has made a complaint. And, uh, and perhaps this is quite discouraging. Are these allegations and complaints something that you will be addressing in future hearings? There need to be vast improvements in this area and benchmarks put in place and not just put in place, but actually uh, used in order to stamp out and to eliminate these kinds of problems. Yeah, so we want to make sure that we're maintaining and striving to have a safe and welcoming environment for all of our employees. No employee should ever feel you know, dread when they think about going into work. If they don't, then we need to talk, we need to talk, start talking about cutting funds or, or maybe uh, removing people. Should Executive Director Bass answer for this? I think so. He's head of it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if the Executive Director cannot be able to fulfill these obligations, then he should step down and let someone else take that position who will. The uh, discrimination and all of that is, is going on everywhere for women. They need to draw their boundaries. TxDOT points out the allegations made by Martinez were investigated and the staff was reminded that type of conduct would not be tolerated. Martinez's termination letter also says she had repeated unsatisfactory performance reviews, though she disputes that. And TxDOT points out she filed the complaint after she was fired. One of Martinez's issues was a lack of women in leadership positions where she worked. When we spoke with Executive Director Bass, he says the agency is working to change that. And for the first time in TxDOT's history, the construction and design divisions are led by women.
Lawmakers on the House Transportation Committee that we spoke with continue to point out that only one person on the agency's commission, which sets the standards and the rules at TxDOT, is a woman. We reached out to Commissioner Laura Ryan about the complaints. She says, We believe that these education efforts proved successful and yielded an increase in filed complaints after 2014. And you will see that the numbers from 2015 to 2017 are relatively consistent. She also says when it comes to gender equity, it's not just TxDOT. It's something that all businesses and organizations should focus on. Still ahead, our political roundtable weighs in on the Me Too and Time's Up movement sweeping the nation, how the issues are surfacing in Texas government, and what you can do about it. Next on this special edition of State of Texas. TxDOT, looking to improve recruitment efforts in recent years, has posted interviews with women workers giving positive feedback on the agency and their jobs there. It provides you with the platform to be able to help society and make a difference in some way. It gives us the opportunity to show that there is growth and then that chance for us to excel. Leaders say this could be a sign of progress, but TxDOT has a long way to go. For a closer look at concerns of sexual harassment and discrimination in the workplace and government, we turn to our political roundtable. Take a look. We want to welcome Sherelle Zachary, the HR manager for Austin HR and employment attorney Austin Kaplan. Do government agencies have a responsibility to set the standard for the greater workforce? The government sets a lot of these policies in place. Somebody had to bring them to the table for them to become a policy, but they themselves don't necessarily have to follow all the laws that they put in place. So I think if we um, change the face of that and ensure that the government is just as liable to adhere to the laws that they have in place, I think we'll be in a better shape. It would be fantastic if we lived in a Texas uh, in which state agencies and the legislature were the shining examples uh, of freedom from harassment, freedom from discrimination, um, equal pay, fair rights, and the private employers could look to them uh, as, the as, as the example and the North mm -hmm. Star for this, um, but unfortunately, I, I don't. I don't know that that's the case. I think it's in the reverse. I think the private sector is setting the example. Certainly in Austin, the private sector, I believe, in my experience, is far ahead in terms of progressive employment values. Mm -hmm. I think the state agencies, unfortunately, because it is a little bit of a tougher road um, to bring lawsuits against the state, I think they kind of hide behind that. Have you seen that it is? easier to win with a private company or uh, you know do you have success when you also work for a government agency government employees have sometimes a harder shot at getting their rights vindicated than employees in the private sector mm -hmm. uh, because government agencies have have things like immunities and there are certain things that apply to government agencies that make it harder to vindicate your rights uh, there's a government whistleblower statute but it's extremely limited mm -hmm. and i would say that uh, if the legislature wants to find more whistleblowers and root out more fraud uh, they can expand that government whistleblower statute, it wouldn't require a fiscal note, and, uh, and folks like me will come and fight that fraud and root it out for them for free. But ultimately, public employees do have uh, the same Title VII rights uh, right. that any private employees have. Um, they have a right to be free from discrimination. They have a right to equal pay. They have a right to be free from harassment. And yes, I know from personal experience, it's a long battle. If you don't fight, you can't win. Men and women, how their salaries compare at TxDOT and other agencies in Texas government, coming up. They just have a, a, a series of occupations that are predominantly male. And so the question is, are you okay with that? Or do you think it's the role of the government to kind of be be a role model and, and set a better example. During our investigation, we asked the TxDOT Executive Director about the agency's diversity plan, not just about complaints, but also hiring. It includes getting TxDOT more in line with the state's civilian workforce, but in many roles, it has a long way to go. Look at the area of service and maintenance, where just 5% of TxDOT workers are women compared to the rest of the state on the civilian side, where women make up 42% of those jobs. Jobs requiring higher skills, like technicians, TxDOT 12%, civilian workforce more than half. Even in leadership posts of officials and administrators, of which 18% are filled by women, while in the civilian workforce, it's 40%. 
Our analysis of state payroll data shows a wide gap when it comes to the highest paid man and the highest paid woman who have the same roles at TxDOT. And sometimes the woman has significant more experience with the agency, like a female training specialist who's been there a decade longer than her male counterpart but makes $11,000 less. Or a female archaeologist with nearly two decades on the man in the same role makes $17,000 less. Or even up to the top ranks, a female director with 24 years more experience makes $30,000 below the man with the same job. Our analysis also shows a woman is not even among the top 25 highest paid employees at TxDOT. The first one falls at number 27. But we also discovered, on average, women actually make more than $5,000 more than men at TxDOT as a whole. Keep in mind, though, with so many more men working at the agency, they take up more of those lower-paying jobs, which drags down the average salary for men considerably. Not all state agencies with significantly less women workers can say the same, though. At the Department of Criminal Justice, on average, women make about 3,000 fewer dollars than men. At Health and Human Services, it's about 10,000. And at the Department of Public Safety, it's about 21,000 less. For a closer look at our analysis and to learn more about the process for filing workplace complaints, check out our complete coverage right now on the homepage of KXAN.com. We will continue to follow this story as lawmakers gear up for the next legislative session here at the Capitol in 2019. Thank you for watching this special edition of State of Texas. Have a great day.